Pirates Podcast, episode 264. All right, everyone shut the f*** up. We are podcast! Wheel of Time, we read a podcast explicit and are freaking rated. John is the wild card, always talking shit. Joe's the straight man, he's a total dick. Tom calls in if he's not too busy. We Podcast, the Wheel of Time re 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 podcast. Now covering Robert Jordan's The Wheel of Time Book Two, The Great Cunt. I'm John. I'm with me as always is Joe. Oh, hey, John. And sometimes Tom. <laughs> always Tom. Still your mask. Oh, I still haven't changed that. It's not always Tom. Yeah, Tom. in fairness, it's not always Tom. I'll give you frequently here. <laughs> Oftentimes. You, you, you're not allowed to say always. Yeah, seriously. You fucked up years ago. <laughs> we do this every time. Hey, have we um have we ever done an episode without Jono before? <laughs> yes. He once got drunk and we had to put him into an Uber and then we did episodes without him. Multiple. That was Patreon, though. <laughs> That's Technically. <true. laughs> I guess that was an episode of the podcast, though. To be Yo, honest. I'm with you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Tom, fuck off. Well, I mean, I know I've been on every single one because you guys don't know how to do anything without me. Incorrect. <laughs> I mean, we can figure it out, but why bother? Yeah, yeah. sure. Uh-huh. Why bother? Because we've got, you know, the guy who drinks crisp. You could probably record it, sure. What would happen after that? Oh, we don't fucking know. We have no oh, yeah. idea. I didn't, yeah. We would email it to you. So you would <laughs> record it. Right <laughs> We would just call each other on the phone, talk for an hour and a half, and then we would send you a text that said, hey, we finished the podcast, put it up. <laughs> you feel like... There was no recording. <laughs> we finished oh, the podcast, Joe. Yeah. Where were you on that shit? And also here today is Andrew oh. BTP, which of course means... <laughs> big, big, tiny... Penis? penis? Big tiny penis. Oh, that's, that's contrarian. I think he's muted. He is yeah. muted. You know why he's muted. He doesn't know what to say about his penis. Oh, hey, Andrew. Hey. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh I'm hurting, like, boys. I'm hurting. Hey, it's my favorite Black Tower podcast member. <laughs> oh, oh, I won't tell Josh or Daniel you said that. <laughs> oh, Joe thought it was just you. I, uh, I, I couldn't oh, no. have told you which one was which until I saw your face, but I was like, I like that guy. <laughs> oh, that's Andrew. It is okay. just me today, but I won't tell them that they're not your favorite. They'll be heartbroken. Hey, listen, it's okay to have a favorite. There's nothing wrong with yeah. that. This is true. There's a, a 1A and a 1B and then a D. I won't let you know who the D is. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like that old corny joke man? about how many letters yeah. are in the alphabet. <laughs> oh, I how are you? You are a QT. <laughs> You'll get the D later. <laughs> Jesus Christ. How are you, Andrew? Uh, I'm hurting in several ways. So, I guess, just so everybody knows, Andrew's here to do drunk recaps of the chapters we're about to cover, and then he's... Are you going to sit in for the for the whole show? Uh, I will be here as long as you guys uh, want me slash can tolerate me. Fantastic. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean... And then I guess... Time, vastly you know? different questions. <laughs> <laughs> so, everybody knows, right, right before we started, I sent Andrew a message, and he said, great, I just got done at the gym. I'm going to take a shower and start taking shots, and I just thought... <laughs> The gym, and then a bunch of shots seems like the best idea ever. Yeah. What's that the first shot? time at the gym since, like, October of 2019, so almost a year. I can barely lift my cup to drink. How much did the cup weigh? Oh. <laughs> Lighter than a feather, but heav- heavier than a mountain, mountain. Yeah. So the cup weighs duty. Yeah. <laughs> Brown on the end. <laughs> Could be the Dr. Pepper or the rum. You're eating your poop. But that's okay. <laughs> take shots. You didn't say of what. Yeah. <laughs> and we at BTP are 100% taint. So. Yeah. Me at, <laughs> we at BTP. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys refer to yourself as BTP on the podcast? Uh, yeah. It's like yes and no. It's like 50 50, one way or the other. What's the other way? Uh, well, I guess it's more like. Like a. What is it, what is that like repeating integers like thirty three point three 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 three? Yeah, you put the ball over <laughs> yourself. Because yeah. sometimes it's BTP, sometimes it's Black Tower podcast, and sometimes it's just like the boys in black. 
which sounds oh, like the boys in black, like an uh, an eighties into early to mid nineties. Like, <laughs> oh, that's kind of the threshold. <laughs> yeah. So, do we give a good enough introduction for Andrew and his podcast for people that don't know it? I don't think so. Andrew's from yeah. the Black Tower Podcast, another Wheel of Time podcast. They are content. Andrew, creator. what do you regularly do on the podcast? I John, is that a furry penis? <laughs> that's my cat fucking baby. <laughs> He's like, I'm not answering that one because it's not mine. Yeah, but I have shaved my penis, so it's not my dick. No, that's I mean, good. Note that I, I do not have dick hair. Like a werewolf, <laughs> yeah. but only from or the waist parent. down. Yeah. There you go. But no, we um we do uh, topical discussions on the wheel of time. Uh, occasionally, like. We'll do spoiler light stuff like we've done book reviews on each of the books. We finally finished that. It's supposed to take exactly 15 months and it took, I don't know, 19. Uh, so bad. Yeah, but generally we pick a topic and we talk about it. Uh, like right now, we're great. We're doing uh, our character analysis of Rand. Because uh, one of the things we do is we'll take and like pick a couple like Matt and two on. And we'll do an episode on Matt and then we'll do an episode on two on. And then we'll do an episode about their relationship. Uh, So right now in the midst of doing YouTuber panels, which the third of which we're recording on the 15th, um, doing that, we got some other guests lined up, getting things finalized for the event in October and all that fun stuff. We're working on Rand and trying to break it up so that people don't get stuck with another like back to back five parter like we did on Elaine. Like if anything lasted longer than Elaine in the bath, it was our parter on Elaine. Tell me how long that lasted. Uh, five weeks. It was five parts. Interesting. On so a you lane? pretty much wanted to follow the book nine ten arc by being overly, you know, giving it, her any type of airtime. Yeah. To be fair, I think like I was only there for two or three of them. So it wasn't. <laughs> it was easier on me. Talk about a lane for five episodes. I don't know. And right she now, she comes we're, up in our podcast, and I'm like, "Fuck that bitch!" And then I just <laughs> 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 move. No, fuck that bitch. <laughs> you know, what's funny is Doyle and Millar heard you. You six. Son yeah, of I'm pretty sure Brandon listened to our podcast back in the day because he was like, "Oh, they really hate Elaine." Yeah. I'm gonna write in that scene that joke they made up of Doyle and Millar uh, cutting her babies out. That's good. <laughs> so we're he trying to get through notes. Rand, and like right now, like each episode is like we're even though we're trying to get through it. It's still like we've done, I think, two thus far on Rand, and it's like two books per episode. I'm like, I really don't want to do a seven parter series on Rand. Like, <sighs> <laughs> it's, it's too much. It, I mean, do you want to spend seven episodes like talking about the same character? Like, it's, it's not back to back. That's why we're doing things in between, but. Yeah, that's true. At the same time, like, I don't want to look back. Like, I already look back on Elaine, and I'm like, five episodes on the Queen of Baths and Curls and contradictory confusing letters like yeah well i'll be honest i i think one of the things that fascinated me about other you're not really hyping me up to go to your podcast (laughs) (laughs) that's true yeah (laughs) Yeah. you're you're not you're not getting you're not getting the best like like, salesman andrew like you're basically going like it might have been five might have been five episodes on elaine but like they're funny there's a lot of humor that goes on yeah all that fun stuff. The five part series of Elaine. <laughs> Sorry, John, yeah, I'll cut you off. What that's the best so. It was, was a rare occasion. Thing, just like what I found fascinating about Walk Wheel at Time content creators is their enthusiasm <laughs> until we met you. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I freaking hate my job. Yeah. Oh my God. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, I love it. Her. Yeah, she fucking sucks. It was yeah. like the worst salesmanship I have done ever for the podcast. So, like, <laughs> Daniel and Josh, like, I am sorry. Well, what like, are you I'm tired from the gym. I'm like pouring sweat because I took a hot shower to try to relax muscles and all that. And the AC in my room just isn't as great as I wish it was. This is like <laughs> not like tantamount to like the worst possible version of Andrew you could get. Like, Oh, I'm glad I, you're here. I'm, I'm like five, I'm like five <laughs> steps away from like being like the hobo on the street asking for like spare change is what that's it what feels like. That's what we're looking for. How are the shots going? Uh, <laughs> No. I am not built for shots. At 27, my body has already said, your drinking days are done. Like, I did the second <laughs> shot, and my, my body was immediately like, uh, uh. <laughs> we're the kind of people that, like, if you tune in randomly to the middle of one of our podcast episodes, you'd immediately be like, what the fuck is going on? 
Yeah, you wouldn't know what the original topic was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you circle back around to it at the end, and that was our discussion of this, and the person's like, what? Yeah. That's we're, what yeah. they were talking about? We're most tame whenever somebody's like, hey, we have a good cause, and we need people to participate, and we're like, we'll be there. <laughs> and then we still wind up not even talking about anything to do with the actual material we're supposed to be talking about, and we shave stuff. How yeah, I noticed that, that, yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> Um, you guys did great on the podcast thon we enjoyed it hey it raised money and that's all that matters it was a good cause it was it was a lot of fun like we we really enjoyed it even though it was only like 10 minutes of wheel of time and like i don't know what 65 70 minutes of (laughs) i'm gonna shave my mustache i'm gonna shave my head how much to make andrew (laughs) shave his beard there is no money that can make that happen it it worked were you bullied more successful than i thought it would be i was not i was not cyber bullied into it i was cyber enticed thank god that would have been that's a great way of practicing against everything we were trying to do (laughs) <laughs> Next time I, mean, I cyber bully somebody, I'm just going to say I'm just enti- I'm cyber enticing them. Just cover my bases. <laughs> the choice is your own, but I highly encourage that you do the A. Yeah. We're just cyber enticing you to cry. <laughs> we did not tell Andrew ahead of time what chapters we were covering, I don't think. Mm, I have no idea. My so that- When I asked what is the prep, I didn't even ask what the prep. I was just told, take 10 shots and don't read <laughs> anything and i'm like i yeah. don't even know what to read i realized i didn't tell you and you didn't ask yeah <laughs> i i'm not gonna lie i didn't take 10 shots because if i took 10 shots like you'd be on the five phone. minutes in you'd be like calling 911 <laughs> really um care. just steady drinking is fine just keep what the uh, keep in yeah that's going. more more than enough. Might, i might have to get up and walk away to refill because i'm not oh, fancy enough to have like a mini fridge in the room and Excess I love your definition of fancy is, by the way, what they call urban trash, I think. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. it worked. <laughs> so this is our episode covering The Great Hunt, written by Robert Jordan. We'll be covering chapters 10 through 13 of The Great Hunt. By the way, and <laughs> book two, chapters 10 through 13, which are, of course, the chapters you were not invited to read, and we love you for it. We are very excited to have you on here. And by we, I mean I, because the other two haven't had excitement in years because they've been married for, uh, fuck, I'm married too. Anyway, Ooh, it's been a different erection since I saw you. Oh, I'll take it. Cheers. That's what are you goddamn talking about? <laughs> Andrew, how much information do you want to try to do a chapter recap of chapter 10 of The Great Hunt? Uh, uh, Joe, what's the lot. Joe? start? Joe, what's the title of the ch- title of the chapter? The title of chapter ten is "The Hunt Begins." The hunt begins. Oh, the boys are going out for drinks. That's what's happening. Like. Yeah, and it's the Rand. It's Rand POV, and I can oh, okay. tell you how it starts if that'll get you going. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's go with uh, yeah. All right. They, so they basically just left Faldar as a group, and they're chasing down. The, they're you know they're or they're trying to chase down the Trollocs. They just met here in last chapter. Yes. All right. Yeah. Sure. And then I can tell. I'll tell you. You want me to tell you how it ends too, and then you can try to fill in the middle. Uh. Yeah. Well, let's try that. Let's see what's All going right. on. So it's it's it starts. They've just left Faldar and met Kieran, and they're chasing down the trolls in the horn, and it ends when they find the the mirror spiked to the whatever door, or whatever. Ooh, that's a good scene. I can't wait to see that on this on the TV screen. Well, probably computer screen because I'm not going to play Amazon on the TV <laughs> unless I can. Be careful oh. playing Amazon. Amazon plays a lot of people. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. No, it's nothing against Amazon. I'm not saying I won't play it because I don't want to. I just don't know if I have the capability. <laughs> <laughs> I love Amazon. Most yeah. of my shopping is done on Amazon. Yeah. Uh, so if, if I remember correctly, like, Matt and Perrin are like they're they're being little bitches towards Rand. Like they're they're pissed at Rand. I, I don't remember why. I don't know if it's like because he tried to leave them behind and he was like being an asshole trying to avoid the Amerlin and got stuck there anyway because all the gates were closed. Is, is that why? Like they're all pissed with him because he was like so, a, a, just a dick. Uh, yeah, he was yeah, for the most part he was to be a lord. Remember, he was trying to force them away because he's worried about himself going nuts. Oh, okay. And I, I remember something about like now that Moraine is convinced that he's the Dragon Reborn, like she had all of his like stout two rivers like wool replaced with like fancy <laughs> shit, and he's like, "This is bullshit. Let me pick the least fancy shit I can and wear it because nobody will notice me." And it's like 
you, you look like a fucking IL. Everybody's going to know who you are. Uh, <laughs> that is also <laughs> That's correct. That happened ahead of this. Did that ha- I mean the replacement did but like like when they leave, that's when he finds out that like not just like what he had to wear that day was. No, you're right. Everything yeah. fucking yeah, replaced. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, she <laughs> like he's like packing his shit and he like looks through it and he's like, "This is all fancy. What the fuck?" All he has is yeah. lingerie. Like it's all silk and <laughs> like that. It's very like, well, this is not for traveling. I feel like that's a bad rule thirty four fanfic, or it could be really good. <laughs> if it's really <laughs> Ran hunting the horn in a g string. Well, and the and the ruby <laughs> dagger, but. <laughs> oh, because this is like it looks kind of like a butt plug. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Here's my ruby hilted butt plug. I can't be separated from it. Oh, it's called sheathing the sword. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's more than one way to get your hair and mark. Uh, they find don't they find like some kind of camp with like signs of Trollocs. I can tell you they find a couple of guys skinned alive from Faldara. I mean, like, I feel like I remember that. A couple of guys who were up to no good. They had gotten in trouble in the neighborhood earlier. That's not the oh, first. Oh, were they place. like, the, the, were they, they wanted to be in the people that like opened the gates for like the Trollocs and shit to come in. They were dark friends and then they find they, them like skinned they alive. They that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I love that you got that from a fresh Prince of Bel Air prom. <laughs> <laughs> the the Masama is with them. I know Uno is with them. Casting up a fucking storm. Staring yeah. at everybody like with one eye because kind of all he's got, but you know, <laughs> don't judge. It's much more two, effective two, later two. when he draws that eyeball on his eye yeah. pack. He has, two one, he has two one eyes. Yeah. And I think the whole time, like, they're able to follow the trail because Huron can, like, because he's a, uh, what are they calling him, like a sniffer? Or a thief yeah. cat. Yeah, they call him a sniffer, right? You say beef cat? No, I said he's I was about to say thief catcher, catcher okay. but because oh, he's good. a fucking beef yeah. cat, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's like, what we're so they're here in from now on. Yeah, <laughs> here in the beef cat. Yeah. <laughs> so like he's sitting there and because he can smell like violence and stuff. They're able to follow the like trail of like murders and stuff that happens. Um, because like I believe there was like a bunch of captives. Like there was a ton of people like missing that like the Trollocs and all took with them as like a food source. You're doing pretty good. You're yep. you're halfway there. Um, <laughs> the only other recap point of note would be doesn't Uno right? like see some chicken white? That's correct. Yes. Yes. <laughs> getting closer. To like, the how end. does the guy with one fucking eye be the yeah, only like, person that spots? <laughs> And they're all just like, dude, your fucking death perception is off. You had a floater in the eye. You're full of shit. And it winds up being like super, super like, well, it's not really super important, but it's, it's like an interesting We're a spoiler little tidbit. Heavy podcast, Andrew, you can say whatever the fuck you want. Oh, okay. Doesn't I didn't know matter. what the spoiler warning was. I was trying to keep it to the chapter. Like he's the only motherfucker it. that ahead of time sees land fairs, land fear slash serene. Like, yeah, just fucking chilling out and watching them because she's a crazy stalker. There's one. <laughs> Last thing I think of note before the la- the thing that Tom gave you to get to the end. Um, was the end about the the two people skinned? No, that was in the middle. At the end is about. Oh, that's the in the middle. Is this where Far. Ran like walks into the fucking house and sees everything that fucking happened, and he's like, "You're what nailing the fuck? this, Andrew. It's pretty good. Your memory's pretty good. I don't think I would have gotten all that." <laughs> No, no, my memory's not good. Uh, that was a recap of 10. Jono, I'm sure you have a million things to say about it. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, so, first off, fucking love the recap. Very delightful. What are you drinking, by the way, Andrew? Uh, this is Sailor Jerry Spice Rum and Dr. Pepper. Much to Daniel's happiness. Combination. I miss Sailor Jerry. So, I do love the fact that, like, you know, this is where we find out that Rand's the number two for the whole thing, and he does not get it. Like, he's gotten weird stances. Yeah. Like Are you sure? Isn't that the next chapter? That is the next chapter. <clears throat> Are we not chapter yes. three? That's <laughs> extra, where the, extra you know, knowledge. The because he doesn't <laughs> understand it, but Uno keeps gives him, like, the weird stare for everything he does. That's the next chapter. <laughs> Uno yeah, he finds Rand there. finds Rand finds out in the next chapter. I know How do you tell that Uno's Rand's... giving a weird stare. He's got one fucking eye. Like <laughs> Rand and I um, mean all... Massima are glaring at him constantly, but Uno's just glaring at him in this response of like, "Are you really a soldier?" Yeah, I remember well, Massima like hating him until he finds out that he's a dragon reborn. Then he's like, "Let me suckle your peen." 
Uh, that's a good point too, though. So that is true. Uh, right here, one page into chapter ten. Why did he look at me that way? Uno is not like the rest. He's friendly. Surely he doesn't believe me. The tail being that Lord, because Uno's already been like. Uno has been informed, yes, but Rand doesn't know until chapter 11. <laughs> what I said, this is where we find out. Like, I can you fucking figure this shit out. Uh-huh, uh-huh. uh-huh. <laughs> All I heard is Mesa, uh, Mesama is the original simp. No, my recap, I didn't even write anything down. Like, they're chasing the Trollocs, the skinned guys, mind trapped, dead mirror draw. That's the whole thing I wrote. Okay. <laughs> but they do I talk about that. hilarious when uh, Rand, they're setting the gun. <laughs> Rand sets the called? guards on edge because he, like, sees the... It, Basically, they stop the camp, and Rand opens his pack and sees his two fancy coats, and he's like, oh, my God! And they're all like, what? And they all pull their swords out. It's like a hilarious moment of, like, they think something's happening. He's like, look at these coats! There's gold the lace so on them! <laughs> this is bullshit! I don't know, it's fucking amazing. It's like easy he there, has, James he's surrounded Charles. by soldiers, and he sets an alarm up because he has fancy coats. It's like you're, you're in a SWAT To be fair, it's this. far from the dumbest thing he does storm a house and they just fuck you're freaking out because like uh you wore the wrong watch (laughs) the gold doesn't go with my green murder (laughs) happened three feet away from you and you're staring at the fact that you just realized your rolex says (laughs) rolex got ripped off in times square (laughs) this is bullshit <laughs> Should have known better than to buy a ten dollar Rolex. What is this about? And I like how Inkar's only response is like, "Well, eventually, when we win, there will be a feast, and you'll be dressed for it. We'll all look like assholes." <laughs> you mean, reading the until s- then, you're the asshole, though. <laughs> reading the second time, like Inkar is the entire time suspect as fuck because oh, yeah, he's he so is. nonchalant yeah. and chill about everything. He's like, "Oh, I've got nothing to worry about." In the only he's time that he's like conflicted, though, yeah, but like yeah. the only time that he's seriously like, where oh, I might be in danger is when they find the fillet or the crucified merge. All then he's like, yeah, oh, then he's like, that could oh, be a we bad should probably sign. Slow down and set scouts out at night. And watch yeah, because there certainly um, won't be a plot device that negates our slowdown. I love Massima here, who's giving him the creepy eye when he's like serving him food, and he's just like. Just plopping food onto him that slops on a rand, burns his wrist, and everyone's like, What the fuck's wrong with you, man? He's just like Fuck. I like how they yell at him not for like the, for wasting the food, basically. They're yeah, mad yeah. that he wasted food. Your description of yeah. him almost made him sound like the cook from uh the Lost City of Atlantis, like the Disney movie. Uh, <laughs> I got your five basic food groups, beans, bacon, liver, and lard or whatever. <laughs> that was only four. But. It's been a very long time since I've seen that movie, but I know who you're talking about. Milo Thatch, man, he got the 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 best girl out of any Disney movie almost. We do yeah, we do find out that Massimo is basically like super fucking racist because Rand just looks like an aisle and he fucking hates it. I mean, he is Aiel, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I guess so. He what? Was like, oh, that still makes that still makes. I mean, he looks job. identical. It's not like he resembles an Aiel. He looks identical to an Aiel. Like there's a slight difference. I don't think he's as tan. I think he's a bit fairer skinned, but. <laughs> You know, they're, that's, all, that's, they're all fair skinned under their shoes. That's, that's splitting ginger hairs there, so we're not going to worry about <laughs> that's that. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Leave us alone. Nobody wants to do that. Um, he's just got PTSD. You guys are giving Massimo too much of a hard time. <laughs> he thinks he's got PTSD now, motherfucker. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> just wait, wait till later. <laughs> it is wait till the one you thought was the Antichrist becomes your savior. The whole um, series is like, you think this is the worst it gets. Just wait. <laughs> And then Galwin shows back up, and you're like, fuck. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. I thought it was the worst it was going to get. <laughs> Tom's right. They do talk about the IEL a lot. I mean, they mentioned that I like the thought that they cut the world into IEL and enemy. I thought that was pretty awesome. Description of their mentality. Doesn't like Inktar like super yeah. respect the IEL because like they're the only people uh, that like purely militarily gave Arthur Hawkwing like an, an absolute defeat. Yes. Yeah. So he's like, I, I can he respect him. in the next yeah. chapter, but he definitely says that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I'm pretty. I, I feel fairly confident in chapter ten from what I may or may not have uh, glanced <laughs> from the summary. But, but I, I do. I absolutely. I lo- I love this part so much. I mean, we get pages of learning about the aisle, and it's really the first time we do, other than just like random throwing here like, and there. You look like an aisle man. Yeah, this is the first time we really. Yeah. Get it. Tom looks like he's in the middle of the Blair Witch Project right now. <laughs> You're like the tenth person to remark on that. I'm actually. <laughs> 
I'm Tom likes to right go outside and smoke and drink and spin around in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Just spin in circles. Where are they? Yeah. What's going on? He's like, that map I threw in the river. Yeah, so the crisscross yeah, trail leads straight a lot to of a back village. And forth chase. Trollocs uh, just needed food, apparently, which is, I thought, hilarious. They don't know that for sure because the village is just empty. But And that's when Uno sees land fire in a window. Whole, I'm just moving us through village. real quick. I mean, it was a tiny little, like, ferry crossing village. It was, like, ten houses. It was nothing. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still running. Like, unless they chained everybody up, like. They have horses and stuff. Well, they say to look horses, at a merge all is to look at fear and, uh, Considering that half of Landfear's name is Fear, I would assume that to look at Fear is to glue your feet to the land so you can't move. Or the lawn, I guess. Is there is their name now actually Lawn Fear, not Land Fear? I'm not, not doing that. And, that. and I'm and I I'm not doing lawn either. <laughs> I'm not gonna have it. Wait, are oh, they I'm pronouncing with you. land lawn? Yeah, that's the yeah. official from Daniel Henney pronunciation of, of land. I'm all for Ooh. land. I'll yeah. call him Land yeah, I don't get for the rest of time. Yeah, don't, don't change pronunciation just those. because it's supposed to feel like semi-exotic. But to each their own. Whatever. If, if I mean, that's, that's fine. They can that's call them the all they want. It'll be a clear distinction between fans of the show or the series before the show and fans of the series after the show because they'll, they'll all call him Lon and we'll all be like, you son of a bitch. You filthy fucking posers. <laughs> a distinction between people that could pronounce the names and people that never could. I thought it was l a n, Like the word L and then A-N. The and, word L. Yeah, like because yeah, it's that's a word. So it's Elaine. Because oh, you Elaine, mean like E L? Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, like Cal. Yeah, L. <laughs> no, it's it's all lawn, uh, Mandragorn. No, it's because it, he was kind of, despite being older, named after Elaine, the best character in the show. Uh, L A. I thought I was the one that was really that drinking. <laughs> they don't yeah. put. Like, yeah, we they don't know that it's Trollocs that. and a Midral and something worse in quotes because Heron describes Fane as something worse. Is, is it weird that they don't Mr. put that together? Yes. Or is that not obvious? Is, yeah. Yes. Because is it weird? How do they not know Are they know just it's like Fane? not expecting Fane to just be that crazy powerful and evil? But they already fucking know. I feel like Moraine spelled it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moraine spelled it out. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Yeah. One it seems like Moraine spelled it out. She was yeah. like, he's the worst of the worst dark friends ever. And then, like, they're like, well, yeah, but the worst of the worst dark friend is that as bad as a troll, like, in a general. Yeah, like, ma- another option? I mean, clearly, uh, Kieran says he smelled it since he fucking left the prison. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, there's only a couple well, options. It could have been something that entered Faldara and then left with them. No. It wasn't faint. When they leave, like, he can tell, you know, enter and like, exit, just like my penis. I guess. Uh, Maybe it's parents' farts. <laughs> he can tell. <laughs> anyway. Something smells like dark friend shit. <laughs> what was that, parent? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. I'm just following the same trail here and it is violence. <laughs> they recover the ferry and they cross it. This is uh, mm-hmm. how we left parent mm-hmm. remarks, which I thought was kind of interesting. And that's when they find Chengu and Nadao skinned alive. And I thought it was interesting because Inktar, although is a dark friend, says we don't, we can't be sure they're not dark friends. Let's give them a proper burial. In fairness, like it makes complete sense for him. Uh, is that a clear indication that they weren't, and he knows that, or is that just him going? We literally just don't know. Like, is he just being honest, or is he like I'm the one who let them in, guys? Like, let's give them a proper burial. I, I think he either he either knows that they weren't dark friends, or he wants to be treated with the same respect when he eventually dies. Once everyone, uh, yeah. he's hey, Tom, I think you said the dark. same thing ten years ago. <laughs> yeah, they're they're dark friends, and I think he, like, everyone knows that, himself included, obviously. Yeah, I think it, 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 I don't, are they dark? Yeah, friends? they're dark friends because they're the ones who actually opened the dog gate. They were the ones on. No. Uh, like, like, Inktar I, opens I, the gate. Oh, yeah. Inktar does open the gate. Inktar lets them in. They were just corrupted by the dagger guarding the jail cell. No, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Oh, God damn, it's hard drinking. Um, Johnny, yeah. you look like an idiot in front of our guest. So one of the jokes that we've perpetuated for a solid decade is that Hake, Samuel Hake was going to rape them. <laughs> the two farm boys in the, in the Four Kings episode, er, er, chapter, if you recall. 
when Rand channels lightning for the first time, like mm-hmm. it was a, it's a joke. It's weird. We're fucked up people. I mean, anyway, it definitely kind of seems like that could be a possible. So operating on the idea that he was going to rape them, I said well, 10 years ago, maybe those fancy ca- uh, coats will help Rand from not being raped by Hake. He's not a farm boy. <laughs> And then Tom replied, Hake would love him a rich piece of ass. I mean, <laughs> to be fair, it was all did. about Rand's sword. That's all he cared about. So That's true. All right. So after and we find this, that and his, sword, sword. You mean his hair and mark penis. Yes. His hair and mark penis. He is truly oh, a cock master. Wait, is that a tattoo or a brand? Either way it would Either way. fucking hurt. Both. Either way it would hurt. The tattoo provided the outline for the brand. Yeah. Oh my God. Within 30 uh, minutes of each other. <laughs> it was God a, damn. It was a tough half hour. Uh, Inkar gets really dark here and talks about the discuss of the, they discuss the falling of nations and he reveals how like fucked up and I don't know, glass half empty he, he is all the time. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's where we see his motivation for yeah. becoming an evil person. Um, that's a, that's and that's a, when they reach the next yeah. village. Yeah. My chemical know, romance see, always plays in the again. background for Ingtar. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's the thing to me that rings the most relevant for uh, Ingtar is the fact that humanity is always on the back foot. Humanity is slowly losing the blight mile by mile, and behind them, there's just disappearing nations because you know, people just aren't fucking enough. Yeah, he literally says something about them being strong because they've always had to fight and, like, yeah. everyone else is just, like, dissipating in the wind. Yeah, it's, like, that is, like, pretty much his entire stressor. And it's... <laughs> not enough fucking and fighting. Yeah, not enough fucking and fighting. And like, so, you know what you should do? Have my fucking wife. <laughs> anyway, um, but uh, like, to me, though, like, it's a fascinating thing is what always happens, though, is the economics. I know, nerd Jono is wait a minute all right so if there's just giant holes of civilization appearing here how is it that there's this many fucking people uh all across the goddamn you know like the rest of the world that can populate hundreds of thousands of people i don't know me and andrew were trying to pretend to fall asleep so i i didn't really understand your question you guys are in the same room I wait you were pretending oh no i wasn't no i was serious <laughs> I want this to so it just ease out and just show. <laughs> yeah, the, the the cameras just merge. It's, 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 I'm just on the other side of the room. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The soundproofing in this room is like dope, though. It's and directional good. mics are like a yeah, creator scent. What was your economic point, Jono? <laughs> it just. <laughs> I really. I'm, I'm actually pretty curious. No, it doesn't make sense that they're disappearing so many times. Like so many it, whole fucking corners of the globe are disappearing with population. Like it's not just villages. I don't know cities. if it's disappearing population. I think it's like the nations kind of settled and they just kind of like don't care about keeping order and their 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 borders are shrinking. I don't know if the population is well, disappearing. If, if you go to the middle of nowhere, how do you live? Yeah, yeah. So they there's no one there. So like, there's only so much arable land. It's not like this is the fucking. I don't know. I disagree. I feel like the two rivers is w- like the exact place that he's talking about. Like it's not really a part of Andor anymore. They're all still there, hanging out, perfectly well, fine. They have the strong. They have the strong. Old not old part old of old a strong old. nation or military <laughs> or like. Joe. I mean, are you really part of a nation that the tax collector doesn't even show up anymore? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's not, I don't think it's about, like, the people are <laughs> that's dwindling. Death. I think it's about, like, the nations themselves are, like, dwindling, as in, like, their borders are shrinking and, and they don't care anymore. And the whole fucking No one has a strong up. sense of, like, there's danger up north or. You're like saying Ohio is still a part of the U.S., but the IRS never worries about taxes from the state. Like, <laughs> are you really a part of the country if the IRS is an African? And there you go. The answer is no. Uh, Bubble of Evil? Flies, you guys want to talk about it? Awesome, and yes. This is cool watching him grab Sadane in slow motion, I thought. Like, in between the flashes of, like, the flies getting denter and he's freaking out. Like, he's slowly, like, in slow motion going, like, assume the void. And then, like, the next time it cuts back to him, he's like, shovel taint into my mouth, you know, kind of thing, you know. Pretty cool. what, is, is, what is this? Is this a trap by Lanphier again? Yes. 
Uh, no, and, actually, we don't. No, know. it's a bubble of evil. It's bubble. It's from Thane, I think. Honestly, I think it's. You said that ten years ago. It's, you're absolutely not right on that. It's not a no, trap from Thane. He honestly, doesn't have the ability to trap Rand like that. It's book nine. What? It's almost the exact same type of like a, a fake image that he has in book nine. A hey, real quick question. You're gonna have to. Hey, no, no, hold on. That. It's so similar to what Payton Fane puts down uh, in book nine, as far as mirages, like weird kind of like things. What and does he do that? Does book six. Yeah, he does in book nine. When, no, I'm just asking. When does he? Do, I don't know what you're referring to. I just, don't, I generally don't remember drunk at that. I'm just asking. All right, so in book nine, before he cleanses the source, while they're still in uh, what is it, far matting. Yeah. Um, like he and Land, like Rand and Land sneak into the fucking uh, right, and all of a sudden, like a fake. I think it's a fake, not Torm. Two of the dead already uh, uh, male channelers walk up the stairs. Rand attacks them, and then they just dissipate. They were never there. Similarly, in huh. book six, yeah, like that whole fucking bubble of evil may or may not be 100% related to Peyton Fane. Like, he's just got weird powers that aren't just... Okay. Like, that's the whole point. Interesting thought. Never mind. I mean, I'm, you know... Gordon doesn't know what the fuck he's doing right now. No offense, dude. So awesome. anyway, he, he uh, yeah. uses the source and uh, burns seven flies out of the air. <laughs> and then that gets him out of it. Eight flies. <clears throat> And then, <laughs> and that's when Perrin points that Matt comes out of a room. Uh, he walks out of the house. Matt walks out of the house. He's like, I didn't find anything. And Perrin's like, there's something in the square. And they all run down there. And that's when they find the midroll. The dead midroll. And that's yeah, when they move on to chapter 11. Yeah. I like, I mean, Inktar is basically like, here and get us out of here. And they leave it there. And my only thought is, who fucking finds that later? <laughs> because that is like fucking insane like if, <laughs> there are a shitload of soldiers they could have like taken it down and like thrown it in the river or just like thrown it in a ditch or something even why, why? leave this pinned <laughs> Mirdral's corpse to a fucking like town so hall building or something that what would be incredible if you were homeless and you just walked into an empty town and you're like this is mine what if you and walked then, into the town <laughs> and you saw like a, a fade just like crucified to a barn door and as soon as you step across an alarm goes off but it's just creeds arms wide open and you see the fade <laughs> Now everything has changed. You've actually weirdly tapped into a strange, long-running joke we have on this podcast. <laughs> where we sing that song way too often. I think. But, uh, I, yeah, I think it'd be. I like. It. I, I think it'd be worth finding a dead mirror draw nailed to a door that I. If all I have to do is take it down, and I'm the mayor of my own town. Yeah, it'd be as fun nailing a murder with it still there. You're basically safe from everyone because no one, er, no one else would be comfortable with that. That's a good point. <laughs> just leave it there. Yeah, just leave it. <laughs> so when <laughs> other Help us show up, and you're like, I'm the mayor. They're like, Who says? I'm like, Well, I did that. I'm like, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> nothing's the mayor. a town that's you know good to go. Then, like, we just fucking strung up a rear drive outside. Like, yeah, what just on Jono's reaction to what I said, I was like, I think it'd just be fun to nail a merge on. He's like, What? <laughs> <laughs> Why? A dead one, no less. You got I mean, it. I wasn't gonna go quite that far. Like, I'm disgusting. And I mean, right. that's what we're talking about. I mean, are we talking about my being discussed? No, we're talking is about this a, a trap? Is this an dead, intervention dead, and not actually a, a podcast? A Andrew, trap. I want to talk to you about your consumption of men. Like dead eyeless men. M I N or M E N? Because it's a very different conversation. And ah. we watched them both. Anyway, uh, chapter 11. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for Andrew's recap. This chapter is called Glimmers of the Pattern. Oh. The Rand Perspective. And John has already given you two hints of what happens in this chapter because yeah. he uh, keeps thinking we're in this chapter. I'll give you and another, It's also give a fan perspective, so it's a little two-parter. Yeah. It is a very... It's a short chapter. That's true. It's much shorter. That was the longest chapter we just did. I think I remember more of Fane's perspective right off, but if I remember correctly, like he's the back half of the chapter, right? Yes. So I don't want to. I don't want to start with Fane. Uh, the back half, but we'll give you your. Uh, yeah, we'll give is, you your is this the chapter where like? Is this the chapter where Rand discovers the fucking um? 
No, Inktar gives him like fucking like a package or something. Uh-huh. It, like yes. directions from a rain. Like you got to be south of this river before you can give it to him. That's and, correct. And uh, oh, so the hint you gave was this is where Rand learns he's second in command, and the entire That's Saldean <laughs> uh, army knows. Yeah, is it Saldean army? Am I right? Saldean soldiers. Soldiers. Okay, so all the Saldean yeah. soldiers already know that Rand is like the number two. And that's yeah, Inkar shit. tells him that like they all know shit. before they leave that place, they all know like to the last man like who would take command next. Yeah. Sh- within Shiner- like Shinarian. Sh- Shinarian, thank you. Oh, sorry, that's how they end. It started with an S. It's close enough. You were Everybody good. knows. They meant <laughs> you meant what I know. Um, <laughs> Just because this is the same one where like Rand thought like his worst thing to deal with in a package or saddlebags was the fa- was the fancy clothes, but then he see like opens like the fucking package and isn't it like the dragon banner itself? That is that is correct. It is, a and then like don't Matt and Perrin see it and they're immediately like busted and like yeah. Matt's pissed <laughs> and Perrin's just like I can't believe it. <laughs> And so they're all like, we're still in middle school. I'm not going to sleep next to you because you're weird and you fart in your sleep. That's what, that's Matt's exact line. I, I believe it. Oh, it sounds yeah. like something Matt would say. Like you smell like a badger in the green crawled up your asshole and died. So I'm not going to sleep next to you. So doesn't he like go off with, uh, with Huron and loyal. Uh, and he has his horse red. Yes. And got then, this. like, they sleep next to like some fucking weird <laughs> stones. Yes. And he's like, Rand's like, they seem kind of familiar. Oh well, no worries. I'll just sleep on them. <laughs> right. <laughs> because weird we shit paint. doesn't happen to me on the daily. <laughs> That's true. This seems familiar. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. <laughs> So I think this is like when we when we as readers learn that Fane like was definitely the one that killed the Murdral in the mm-hmm. village we saw in the last chapter. And I remember he he's like thinking about how like he can usually fill Rand, but sometimes he just like disappears. And I can't recall like why. Uh, uh, he's like playing with the fucking dagger because he's like I finally have it back. My precious fucking <laughs> golem sort motherfucker. Of, yeah. No, I, I heard that my precious. That's correct. I mean, kind of, yeah. Oh, that's right. That's that's. I mean, that's kind of it, really. Doesn't isn't this like like they get to or you find out that like he allowed the Trollocs to take all the villagers from that last village too, yes. and they're all and like bitching about how they're hungry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then like he looks. At, doesn't he like look at the dark friends and like. Listen, or you're next. I'm the only yeah. thing that protects you. <laughs> yeah, just you goes also, back to stroking a you fucking also do learn that they are dark friends, and it's not like they just took a bunch of people with them when they left. They mm. took dark friend from Felda. So, which really seemed like him a such favor because he took all the dark friends. Well, I guess we'll get to it. What's going on with all the right, horn? So I don't. I know he has it, but he has it. That's a. I don't remember what's going it, on. They have with it in the chest. <clears throat> they have it in the chest, but they can't open the chest. No, he has it open. He's like caressing the horn. No, he can't. He's caressing the dagger. Oh, he's caressing the dagger. Yeah, he... Doesn't he trace the Um, silver outline of the script on the horn? No, it's on the sinuous opening of the chest, but he can't... Oh, on the chest. Yeah, yeah. It's like playing with the chest, not your horn. He hasn't gotten that far yet. I gotcha. I know what you're saying. That's the recap. Let's uh, talk about Rand finding out he's second in command. Like John, I I wrote they stop early. They stop a little early because Inktar's shaking. He sends out scouts for once. Uh, Rand gets the banner from Inktar. Learns he's second. And Inktar tells him that Algamar's was the one who Algamar was the one who gave the orders. However, Moraine was in the room but didn't say anything. So, like, clearly, Rand's like, well, obviously it was Moraine. Angtar should be shaken, I guess. A mere girl nailed to a door should... It's yeah, that would shake that would anybody. Even if you're a dark man, you think a, you're okay, like, you're not worried about anything, like, a mere girl staked to a door through the eye that aren't even there would be pretty fucked up. Yeah, 
even as a shenarian, I would be like, are we still going to follow these guys? <laughs> yeah, like a bad also, idea. Like, also, Rand was like, he, you know, like they could tell that it was still alive when it happened because there was like a bunch of boot scrapes on the stairs of the of the of like the building, like as it happened or something. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, Jesus what Christ! Do you, what do you, what do you think the Shenarians think killed that mirror draw? Like super mirror draw? Who the fuck knows? I mean, I assume they Honestly, think it's like a forsaken or like a dreadlord or something. Like, what, what else could they do it? Possibly, yeah, what they can't your... possibly think it's a forsaken or freed. Like, well, honestly, what's going on in their imaginations? I mean, don't they already like a portion of them already kind of think that that maybe not the dragon reborn, but like the light became flesh and like saved them in Tarwin's Gap already. Like yes. some of them are yes. already like something happened. We don't know. Like I don't know. It wouldn't be that hard, far off for them to be like maybe it's a Brazilian, you know, or maybe it's this. I suppose I feel like they just feel like it's like five mirror draw that formed super mirror draw like Voltron and killed the regular <laughs> mirror draw. <laughs> Which one's the head? <laughs> See, it's the only I explanation to think of Captain I can come Planet. Yeah, I'm with you. They've got to suspect something fucking like not all of them, but at least a small subset probably expects like something fucking weird happened at Tarwin's Gap. Well, weird. none of them are suspecting Fane, for instance. Yeah, so I like, guess that's where true. would their logical saw, brain go? Agreed with that, but just something. Yeah. Something. They did yeah. see Jesus come to Tarwin's Gap and throw a fire at everybody, and then they found yeah. the Horner Valera. So they and must, then they yeah. won suddenly, and they went home, and they're like, and then so on the flip side right, of that, coin, something truly evil's happening. Is it really that far fetched for them to be like, I think it was forsaken? Yeah. Yeah. So all right, I'll buy it. Um. Uh. So Uno or uh, yeah, Uno is saying like, you say what you want to, uh, but you know how you flaming say it. Or you watch how you flaming say it, or I'll bloody skin you myself and burn the goat kissing hide, you sheep gutted milk drinker. Too soon. You sheep gutted milk drinker. Is that is that cum? What is <laughs> <laughs> I like that you're focused on the cum and I'm just like you really I like how you're focused people. on the milk drinker part. He's threatened to skin <laughs> people alive right after they found people skinned a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I would be looking at Uno with scans at this point, I'd be like, what? <laughs> like, we just found two of your friends skinned alive. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he's never thought of threatening anybody with that before, and then he saw two people skinned alive. And then he's alive. like, oh, that's like, horrifying. That's a good idea. Hey, you yeah. know what'll scare him if I bring up that thing we just saw five minutes ago? There's <laughs> a lot of sheep gutted milk drinkers back there, and I could fucking do it to you. So Rand finds out uh, he's second in command. Yeah. yeah. When it's coming. You can do it, you know. It'd be yeah. easy. <laughs> <laughs> I might cut too deep because I have no death perception, but it'd be easy. Oh, comma. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know how to skin. He just cuts his muscles straight off the bone. What do you think? Ah! That makes him feel better. Five killing bro, potatoes. Cut his arm up. Sorry, I got no death perception. Only got like one when eye. you're five peeling potatoes and instead of being like kind of round, it's all like straight, like Tetris <laughs> at, like angles. This guy's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we yeah, have an army? You have interesting childhood memories of peeling a potato. Hey, I wasn't very um, good at five years old, but I got better with my hands. <laughs> so yeah, both of your um, eyes. That's true. <laughs> yeah, he opens the banner. Discuss. Tom, 10 years uh, ago, you said something along the lines of parents an asshole for not telling Rand what's going on with him because... He has like, a huge secret, and he's basically like, "You can channel. Sucks for you. You should probably." Not. <laughs> That's true. I don't just have feel like wrong a good me. Just feel like a good moment to be like, "I also have something weird going on." Instead it of just being like, "Freak!" <laughs> yeah. Get out of here, freak. Anymore. In fact, you should run away. <laughs> Look, I can talk to dogs. Uh, you can lick the literal devil shit off a like weird pool of light. I don't care for it. <laughs> I love how Matt's like the one that's like so incredibly pissed about everything. And it's like, bruh, half the reason that Rand even agreed to go on this fucking trip is because yeah. they stole something that without it being near you will literally kill you. And he's like, well, yeah. fuck you. He <laughs> does. I don't know. There's and a moment there Rand. Where, like Matt's kind of saying, oh my God, you're fucking Satan. Like when he sees the banner and then Rand's basically like, I only stayed for the dagger. And he's like, Oh, mm. I feel like, I mean, there's like a moment where he's like, fine. I'm still yeah. upset at you. How do you call <laughs> somebody? Very Satan nice thing to do. 
How do you call somebody Satan whenever you are like <laughs> literally essentially possessed by yeah. evil incarnate? It's like I know. talk hey, about pot this, calling you know, kettle. You know. Remember I was possessed by the devil and you stood right by my side and now he's like, you have a kind of problem. Remember how I guided your paranoid want to kill everybody and stab everybody ass to somewhere where you actually now have some semblance of sanity? No. No, no, we're going to forget about all that. Like, Uh, go fuck yourself because you're a a madman. Because because you think I'm calling myself a lord right now. That's a pretty shit. This is a pretty (laughs) shit baggy moment for Matt. Like, and the easy cop out is to blame it on, like, the effect of the dagger and the separation of the dagger. That's not what this is at all, though. No. I don't think. It's Matt being like, this isn't a badger in a sack anymore. I'm not down for these kind of shenanigans. Go fuck yourself. All right. I take it back. I give him 10%. It's the dagger. Your separation. <laughs> the rest of ninety yeah. percent of Matt, all Matt. <laughs> Matt was possessed by the devil and ran stood by his side, and then ran put on a fancy coat. Matt was like, "Fuck you, hoity toity." Okay, lace boy. <laughs> yeah, this is ridiculous. Uh, the fancy. Uh, so all I now, have to say is like, so, uh, I love that. Well, first of all, he does talk about like feeling more himself or whole and i assume that's closeness to the dagger like it's somehow like reconciling the i'm pat and fane i'm more i'm ordeaf into what is now more death i think thing, every but- fucking horror movie red flag in the book yeah. i feel better now yeah. it's paranormal activity when she's like no i think it's better if we just stay <laughs> he does I feel good he needs a connection to that city i just i just read uh the prologue to fires of heaven and yeah he's still trying to get that dagger back and like uh, talking about how he can't go back to Aaron Hole to get it. Anything else is that. too dangerous for him. <laughs> yeah, you might get, oh, he might get trapped talk in an Aaron that. Hole. One. Yeah. Nobody wants to be trapped in an Aaron Hole. <laughs> more time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've never had sex. <laughs> Woo! Um. Damn this heat. <laughs> Who knows? Um, I mean, that's that's kind of it, really. Yeah, I mean, the the dark friends and the Trollocs and him remembering killing the Fade is amazing. But other than that, it's not like there's not a whole lot to discuss. I mean, it's like yeah, I skimmed it. I I skimmed that part. I mean, that's good for like the reader. It's like, like, oh, it's fantastic on a first read. This is riveting. Yeah, you get like chapter ten. Ten was the first one, right? Yeah. Like for yeah. not, I mean, obviously not the first ever, but like for this discussion, yeah. And you, you get the like amazing image of them coming in and seeing like a fade like crucified, and I'm like, yeah, it would only been like better if like the fade was crucified upside down. That's some real like, <laughs> well, not Judas exactly energy, but I can't. The think only of the thing would have been if he had just grabbed that would have been ex- grabbed it by the throat and turned him upside down, <laughs> and then he just really ripped his hands and hammered him back in. <laughs> The, la- the only thing that I wanted to say real quick was the the interesting note of, well, I mean, we already said it, but they're dark friends, but killing all the people and putting the heads on them. And he's like, you can eat what you can, but just pile all the bodies up and put the heads on top. Like, he's just <laughs> fucking with them at this point. And I'm like, I fucking love it. Fate is you so think, fucked up. It's, it's amazing. Do you think, like, Trollocs, like, fight over certain body parts, like delicacies, like... For sure. Like, ox tongue. Is that, like... The, yeah, like, trolley like equivalent 100%. of, like, m- like male, God like, genitalia. I wanted that mid-30s. I need the human mountain oysters. The fields. <laughs> Tesco's have such a fantastic crunch for the creamy yeah. feeling. Uh, not in my case, at least. Uh, so he cackles I like a madman. And are you a trolley? Dancing on Tom and Head with no, Rand. No, weird testicles. Oh. I wasn't oh, talking I- about weird testicles. I mean, I mean... Because, you know, like, how people now, like, we, well, at least in the South, at least, we make jokes about, like, mountain oysters and it's yeah. goat balls. Yeah. Like, the Trollocs, like, are, are certain things, like, delicacies. And is there different parts of, the, of, like, the human anatomy that are better to eat than others? Like, do they fight over, like, oh, like, you know, like, some, some people love cow tongue, like, yeah. as far as humans are concerned. Are there Trollocs <laughs> that are like, no, I'm going to take the human penis, like... <laughs> Again, I can't speak for your family, but mine, they would not do that. <laughs> I mean, my family never so ate human beings. 
So there's absolutely parts of a human body that are going to be more tastier than other parts of a human body, just like a cow or any fucking other animal. Yeah, yeah just watch uh, Silence of the Lambs or something. Well, we've got to meet the like trolley that goes for Trollics the gluteus maximus first. Trolleys have palates. They're not just they monsters. Like you know, we gotta find of, the trollic that eats ass first. You gotta find the trollic <laughs> yeah. that eats <laughs> ass. And, and there then, you go. And then the one that's eating it with him, and he's like, "Oh, you're not gonna eat the whole. That's the best part. That's the one." Nargus, Nargus, smart. <laughs> <laughs> It's a Narg's just a dude who's just kind of like a weird sexual addict who just <laughs> do you think <laughs> he just wears like the head of a boar say, that he got hunting and he's yeah, not no, even a trolley. Yeah. If he's Narg's not a trolley, he's just a weird guy that lives outside of yeah. Evans Field. He was the only one that talked. Every they were all trollics and he was just the guy in a costume. He's just the I weird know, homeless was, guy on the corner begging for changes. Like fuck it, I'm joining. Yeah. We're killing everybody. He was he, he was a furry. Recluse. He was just there to borrow some sugar. Narg was the only furry. time he's ever needed another human for anything. <laughs> if only a Monsfield didn't hate the Terran Ferryman, then he would have survived. Village in the Blight, right? I think that village in the Blight has that, like, you know, just like one family, of just like, you know, you know, pedophiles that's into whatever the fuck. They just dress up as Trollocs and go fuck whatever's out there. Yeah, Narg was at a furry convention that got attacked by Trollocs, <laughs> and he was the only one that lived, so he yeah. just joined up. Who's never been there, right? I mean, it's, it's a life-changing... Can you really call yourself a human if you don't experience yeah. this exact situation? He had, he had just won first prize of the costume contest when the Trollocs showed up. And he's he was like, fuck, I, uh, I'm one of you guys. Yeah, get him. I mean, he's like, get, yeah, eat, get eat people. <laughs> yeah, me too. What? He like, what stayed we, behind, we... and he was like... <laughs> I'm I'm just gonna like stay in character and they'll never notice that I'm gone. And then Rand shows up and he's all like, uh, "Narg is <laughs> smart." It, that makes that makes it so dark. <laughs> he's just like gives to Rand. He's like, "Save me!" And then Rand stops. Did you imagine that scene if like, like even if it was like a blooper scene where like Rand like goes to like fucking stab me and like the fucking trolley head falls off and it's just like a normal guy being <laughs> like, a guy "I was oh I was God. feeding your sheep, <laughs> fucker." <laughs> I just, I just had a fetish. Just That's it. It's, it's it's at least headcanon now. Narg wasn't actually a trollic. He was yeah. uh, a third age furry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> furry faster. Can yeah. you do me a favor? Right. Read Narg backwards. Graham. It's someone's grandfather or grandmother. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, grandmother. Or sure. mother. That explains the broken English. <laughs> yeah. And it's just kind of someone who's old just trying to like, well, it's, uh, it's Graham. And uh, just shut the fuck up, kid. I'm going to eat you. That's I it. got tired right. of like being like, grand, grand. Like, do you remember who I am? Uh, grand uh, Narg is smart. <laughs> <laughs> chapter 12, woven in the pattern. It's a uh, Neneve chapter and an Aguin chapter. So, can I start this off? I'm a little offended just by the title. No, you can't. <laughs> you can't start it off. That's the, that's the no, you can't. basis of what we're doing. <laughs> it's, it keep talk, it's a, we have Andrew here to give a chapter recap, and then you can speak. <laughs> I, just, I just think it's fucked up. Robert Jordan's clearly sexist, woven in the pattern as women. <laughs> Joe, do that again. <laughs> well, is that like a, a knitting no, joke? Like, yeah, you know, that, knitting... That, that, Clearly, Robert is trying to go after knitting. I mean, if it's about, like, 90... What is it about, Andrew? And Egwene, <laughs> uh, who are definitely participants in this chapter, they're definitely there and doing things with other people from That's the series. True. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, they kind of are, like, woven in the pattern. I, I can I can understand, like, what you're kind of getting at, like... So, all right, Andrew. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, it's the Marilyn and and Gwyn and Nave and Aes Sedai are leaving Faldera. All right. And Continue. Heading towards a boat. <laughs> Continue. And heading towards a boat. Because they... <laughs> the thing when they leave, the whole, like, they eventually... the whole thing is like, we need to go back to Tarvalon. Uh, we need to go back to Vaginal Island. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Well, they're going is there this, for the first time. Is this the chapter where, like, they first start suspecting that Egwene is, um... It's not a... It's not a she doesn't have foretelling. It's a dreamer. A dreamer, yeah. Yeah, John Lennon song. Yeah. And they're like, this is the <laughs> first one in, like, for fucking ever, but it's really not for fucking ever because the time frame isn't really terrible. Yes. Like, terribly long in Aes Sedai time. 
This is a relatively short chapter. There's not a ton here to talk about, but that is a big uh, note. Yeah. Um, what a note happened. So there's there's that thing about Egwene being, or the thought that Egwene may be a dreamer, because she's all about like, but Rand's going further down, and he's in danger. And I'm like, <laughs> giggity. <laughs> but <is>. also... <laughs> that's accurate. But it's I think, like, correct. Doesn't, one of them sit, that, that's, doesn't one of them, like, try to reassure us, like, either he has the horn by now or it's in the blight. And I'm like, if I'm having consistent nightmares that he's in danger and you're like, either he has it or the horn is in the blight, you're only making me think that we're fucked and not in the good way that I was about to be uh, on winter night before the Trollocs attack. Uh, honestly, uh, unfortunately, Andrew, uh, that's one of those things that I was rereading this time and I was like, holy shit, I don't know if I realized that it was like A or fucking B and it was clearly you're feeling B, which would just be death in the blood and good luck to him. Yeah, because doesn't yeah. like Moraine, Moraine and Lon are land. <laughs> I've drank too well, much. I'm did. saying long. It's land on this podcast. Uh, it's, it's land on our podcast too. I mean, people might say things wrong, but you know, Daniel and Josh don't necessarily always speak for me. Love you guys. Uh, no, no shade thrown. But uh, yeah, it seems like there's a real negative Nancy with them. That's always like, nah, shit's going down. We're all gonna die. I've given up on life. Here, listen to the Black Parade by My Chemical Romance. We'll vibe together until we die. <laughs> Everything's over. The world <laughs> is gone. And it's like, but is it really though? Cause like by the time I'm reading the series, I know there's at least like, I don't know, eight more books. Pretty sure everything isn't done now. I mean, and that's a good point. I mean, as a reader, yeah. you. Know. It depends on like when you picked it up. Like if you were one of those people that was reading it as it was coming out, then you're like, oh, cliffhanger. Is it going to end in the next book? Uh, but for those of us that like, you know, that are like my age, like I'm, I'm 27. So I didn't even start reading it. I didn't even read the first book until I was like, like 16, 17 ish. Maybe I don't even remember how old I was. Uh, by the time I started reading it, books one through at least 11 or 12 were out. Um, so whatever year that was, do the math. I was born in 93. Don't try to steal my passwords because that's nothing to do with my birthday. Good luck. Uh (laughs) Six, nine, nine. (laughs) Six nine six nine four three ninety three. Got it. Yeah, yeah. All right. So that was the chapter twelve recap. Is that pretty much what happens? Like, I mean, basically, yeah. Agway <laughs> might be a dreamer. <laughs> Moraine and Land disappear, yeah. and nobody knows why. The Emerald and all of them are trying to go back yeah. to Vagina Island. Yeah. Um, they, the only yeah, other thing I'll note is that Varen teaches tra- them. <laughs> there's a training how, montage. Yeah, there's a training montage. <laughs> And then, yeah, is it like set to blinding to lights by the weekend. Yeah, it is. Yeah, God damn, I hope it is. <laughs> it really is just. It is just one ace that I have to be in another coming into the tent to try to teach a uh, Aguin and Nave how to channel or try to teach Nave how to not be so. Here's the real way how to defeat the darkness. <laughs> no, here's the real way. Where are they? Can you teach me this? What did you call it? The new way. How many, of the, how many of the Aes Sedai that went into that tent, and I guess spoilers again, since we didn't super announce it at the beginning. Are like dark, a, a euphemism for pillow friends? How many Aes Sedai went into the tent? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Just that would be yes. pussy friends. That was going on. <laughs> He's at least four. That's what pillow friends are, Tom. <laughs> um, well, Tom. To Tom's point, and also, Tom, you did bring this up 10 years ago. <laughs> did I but, really? Yeah. <clears throat> I wrote, Tom points out how many Black Aja teach Neneve and Egwene. <laughs> and then I yeah. mentioned Neneve and Egwene. Oh, Mog. Oh, we refer to Megidian as Oh, Mog. That's our, that's our. Yeah, oh, Mog. They, they, yeah. they learn how to. Oh, my God. Almost like so many dark friends. <laughs> they, I mean, Leandrin, Alvierin, and Varen, who is, you know, dark friend light. But all three of them teach them on the way down there. Alvierin. And then the only other one is like Alana. 
It was he just, just like downloaded the Black the Aja app off of Android, but it was the light version, <laughs> not the paid version. Yeah, yeah, she's just light. She's light. <laughs> you didn't pay for this, God. So does that mean that if she had an iPhone, she wouldn't have had anything to worry about because they don't do light version? So here's an annoying thing I wanted to talk about. Um, I've never had an Apple product. I don't know. <laughs> it, it starts off with a Neve, and they're they're with the Aes Sedai, and they're getting ready to leave, and like Rand and Rand and everybody has left. And she's worried about Rand, but he's like, she's like, a, she goes like, well, he's out of reach, so I'm not worried about him. And then immediately they had talked about, they talk about the attempt on the Emirulent's life, which we all know is really an attempt on Rand's life. And they immediately, what? Like, this is literally the beginning of the girls like being like super fucking annoying and like belittling the fuck out of everything the, the guys beginning? do from this point on. <laughs> no, sure? this is the true beginning because when they separate. It's horrible. Before, when they're together, it starts on a mom's like, field. Man. Oh, you're the Dragon Reborn. Oh, you can channel. I'm still sort of on your side. And then later on, it's like they separate, and you're just like, oh, the miscommunication is so annoying. Let me counter with is, the. I don't care what you say, Rand. She says I can channel. I'm going with you. <laughs> yeah. I don't care what you say. And it's and then the, fast forward to bear to, to, to bear lawn of being assholes and being like yeah. we're gonna save you guys all the time and let's fast like, forward to bear lawn of I'm here to save all the all people from my village and be oh. like we're we're all badasses let's move on so after they leave Aldar well that's when we get the training montage <laughs> yeah that's Varen comes in to give them lessons and she's basically like Aguin you're Trying to learn on your own. That's dumb. Neneve, you've already learned on your own. That's also dumb. It's called your But hey, Aguain, don't feel bad because Moraine did the same shit. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. She's like, she basically says, like, Neneve, you're lucky to be alive. And Aguain, you're an idiot. Stop doing this without a teacher. <laughs> kind of thing. And, that's, and then she's like, don't worry, Moraine did it. But, mom. But, mom. Sorry. And then the Neneve's part, like, well, I'm going to go. And she's like, well, all right, you can go, but I think you're close to being accepted. But uh, if you don't stay and learn, you might be a, a, a novice and they have to do chores. And then Neneve's like, oh, well, fine, I'm staying. And he's like, oh, then you're staying? You mean she didn't funny. bring her a Monsfield? Pretty funny, to unsubtle beat reverse with? psychology by Varen. I feel like they. Not Neneve is still very abusive, fucking beating everybody with a stick to get what she wants. I feel like the Aes Sedai are spending a lot of time trying to convince Aguin and Nave to go to the tower here almost and why they, like... It's it's already there. Impressing on them, like, why they need to learn. And they're like, we're on the way to college already. Yeah, we're coming with like, you. I'm not going to jump over the side of the boat. But did you study for your SATs, Joe? <laughs> oh, you're on your way. Fuck. <laughs> At any rate, uh, Tom's not wrong, and it's just basically a training mon- montage. Alvarian's there, Dark Friend, and Alana's eight, there, and two curious Leandra's there, fucking bitch, Neneve throws her out. An 80s training montage, by yeah. the way. Hey, I want to make point. that very clear. Like in the style of Rad. So we know that Eve actually heals, like, or well, not, maybe not heals, but is there for when a queen has like, like, oh, fuck, never mind. I already, I already answered my own question. Fuck it, never mind. I that was your comments? Question. Yeah, no, that's yeah, the best that, question. Where I don't have to do any <laughs> extra work to fucking answer the shit. Like, well, fucking funny, figure it out. My mind went to we know that Nynaeve heals a queen, and a queen has breakback fever. Like, or mm-hmm. my mom was like, well, she has brief back fever because she's channeled before. But actually, that's not the, the case. The, the channeling is created. It doesn't fucking matter. I got backwards. I like the name, though. I like the name of break back fever. It like, sounds horrible, actually. Is it so like for Ashaman, is it horrible. broke back fever? Yeah, yeah. it is. That's correct. This okay. one, a bunch of men. Just better not be on Dick on a mountain. mountain and build a black tower. And they, hang and they get real. Yeah, hey, they get really hey, hot. sir. I will correct oh. you because many have confirmed that it is on a phallic shaped island. All right. That is true. That is true. <laughs> All right. Uh, um, beautiful, beautiful stuff. I mean, it's only fitting if, like, if Tarvalon is going to be shaped like a vagina, then, yeah. you know, why not the Black Tower be on something that's shaped slightly phallic, like a hot dog or a horse in or, heat or, or something like that? Or a dick. <laughs> why not two horses in heat? <laughs> You know <laughs> like a private eye? Do you, are you saying dick in like the 1920 sense? Like a private eye? Like, yeah, like a yeah. wiener. Which inherently like a sounds like, yeah, like a, a private dick. 
A private dick sounds like an inherently scandalous name. Like, welcome to the private dick and go to sleep. Don't worry about it. Like, so no, to your point, I'm going to worry about it. Andrew, <laughs> Anaya is the one who gives us a bit of an info dump here and is like, oh, you might be a dreamer. Oh, and by the way, uh, Moraine left and then Land left and then uh, Leandrin left and then Baron left. And like, did- basically, a bunch of people left. Why did Leandrin leave? Uh, because Leandrin is a fucking Leandrin bitch. Is Wait, what, Tunnel? What? Social. She was supposed to be following them. Oh, uh, thank you. I like Andrew's answer more, but yours was <laughs> accurate. Good enough. Why does she leave? Because she's a fucking bitch. She's a fucking bitch. <laughs> and that's also in the Dark Friend Social. If you notice, there was just... So clearly she like, fails like, at following them, though, because she's like it, back in the tower relatively soon, right? Doesn't Varen leave Thomas behind, like, her yeah, she does. warder? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yeah. Correct. And like Thomas is like, this is bullshit, and rushes back to Tarvalon, and it's like, I think Marin okay. left her warder behind for I don't because know she's why, black but maybe, Aja? yeah, but yeah, probably because she's Black Aja for some reason. Maybe like she couldn't leave without lying this or something. And didn't want cold to know. And I, think I think I give no shits out. about my warder when he's <laughs> gone, gone. That's a good gone. song. That's a good song. <laughs> I don't know why, that. like, it's stuck in my head right now, like, uh, that- this is why I don't, I mean, I do drink whenever we do anything, but, um, <laughs> Is that it? Is that it for 12? I mean, Egwene might be a dreamer, and she's not the only one, I think, is the only but And dreaming not- might be linked to foretelling. You might be a dreamer, but you're not the only one. Sing it, John Lennon, or Joe Lennon. I mean, I just said it. Did, did you One meet day, John Lennon? we will join us. <laughs> Let's wrap this the shit up. World chapter 13. One. You ready, Andrew? This chapter is called From Stone to Stone. It's a Rand POV. I'm pulling, I'm pulling oh teeth. My. I will tell you this. One thing that we forgot to mention is how the end of chapter 12, because I've really enjoyed Egwene so far, uh, for the most part. Egwene? This is where Egwene just goes like, <laughs> yes. Okay. He's, he's just like, oh, don't worry, Rand. I'll save you despite how much you don't fucking know. Like, like this is like I said. I feel like this chapter is literally the beginning of that. This like huge annoyance with both groups of people. This yes. chapter literally starts it all. I'm telling you. Here, if you agree that Egwene is a Mary Sue, this is the chapter that your argument really starts. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you're this random talent that we haven't seen for like 800 plus years. Let's go. Do you think like, she's a Mary literally Sue? Like, <sighs> I feel like he's trying to say yes without being an uh, asshole. Uh, I do. <laughs> so I'm so torn. Like, I want to say yes because of the way she, everything that happens to her, everything that happens to her as a character to me indicates Mary Sue. Can I interrupt? But I love Robert Jordan so much that, like, Part of me wants to say, like, well, she can't be a Mary Sue because she was made before Mary Sue's were really actually super a thing. He's a Sari Moo. But it's like every time there is something that happens, she doesn't have the plot armor of being Taviran. Now you can claim proxy armor of Taviran by being her proximity to Rand and the other Taviran, sure, making yeah. her a proxy Taviran. Honestly, if a Gwen was written and it was revealed, at least at the end that she was Taviran all along, I would have no problem with some of her stuff, but it's like... I feel like it should have been the case. I, like, I, 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 in, think, in fact, I think if they change it for the show, I'll, I'll like applaud it, because I think it's one of the biggest things that Robert Jordan was weirdly... I mean, Taviran's not a real thing. For some reason? <laughs> whoa, whoa, well, whoa, whoa, whoa sir. We're living in a fantasy series right now, and I don't need your reality substituting my own right now. <laughs> hey, Tom, I'm trying it's, to escape it's, from my job. It, it's it's made up as an explanation for you know by the author I mean, as to why it all is a plot of sure, things happen to the thing, main yeah. characters. So, I mean, in theoretically, every single character that has a plot point is a minor Taviran in some way, shape, or I mean, form. Yeah. Definition you're, you're not wrong. No, I think the minor Taviran could be explained away as in it's all woven into the pattern, which is just yeah, yeah. somebody writing a guy. Well, yeah, you have yeah. your three main characters <laughs> and everybody else is swept yeah. up in their wake, so everything that happens to every single one of them is... The point armor. is, he was brilliant for making up a plot device that fit with making things work. Made up many it plot actually, devices. The, 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 seriously. There are many <laughs> plot devices. Calling, <laughs> calling, calling plot armor Tevieran is fucking brilliant. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he, he makes many of it. Like, so, 
You have somebody like Rand who was initially deeply ingrained with the lifestyle of Egwene who we see they separate their ways, but no matter what they do, the shit's fucking entwined. And at the end, it's super entwined, not because of their direct connection, but because of the shit she does and the shit fucking mix scuzz a lot. Tracon dirt to dir of the entire series does the best thing he does of the entire series with, you know, three steps. But, you know, read it on your own. It's not going to tell you what he does. You know what he does. Yeah. But whatever. All um, right. Andrew, tell us about Chapter 13. Go. Chapter From 13. Toe toe, Rand POV. That's uh, all I'm giving you. <laughs> so Rand is there. Is this when they wake up in the in the portal world or the, yes. the mirror dimension? Yeah. Yeah. So they went to sleep on the rocks with the weird carvings because that's what the fuck you do in strange territories. Sure. Whatever. So Rand wakes up and he has Loyal and Hiran uh, with him, but everybody else is gone. Uh, was, Red is Red still there? He's got he still have his horse. He's got his horse. Yeah. Yeah. Did he yes. save a horse and ride a cowboy? I think, think Hiran still has his horse too. They all, I think they all they all have their horses. Oh, okay. One of the last things was to sleep next to your horse. Oh yeah, Inkar literally said that. Like sleep next to your horses. Yeah. Yeah. That device happened. Everyone stays in the right space. <laughs> Everyone so, stay right next to their mounts tonight. Not because yeah. Rand and Loyal and Huron are about to disappear, but because I think it's security. That's important. So I think, like, Rand wakes up before anybody else, looks around, and is like, shit looks fucking whack, and screams like a bitch and wakes everybody else up. Or yeah. deliberately wakes yeah. them up, however you want to yeah. say it. And it's just like, we're not in Kansas anymore, like, is it, like not literally, but he's more like this shit's weird. Like, what the fuck's going on? We're not in the um, U.S. or America or the world. I like the idea that he said that literally. Keep going. I, I like the idea, but we're not in Kansas anymore. And it's like Toto, Toto, where and are you? And then he's like, Loyal, who's Toto? Get your head in the game. <laughs> Let him finish the recap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, it's not really that crazy. Like, I feel like this that's should it. all be part of the scenes that happened. I mean, that's it. Yeah. That- that is pretty much the reason. And I feel like like Rand considers for a moment that he channeled in his sleep at the stone, and that's what ha- yeah. caused everything to happen. So he tries to do it again, and when he does, like the void in the flame just shatters, and it, it just fucks up. It doesn't work. And that's he's correct. like, okay, well, this is weird. And roughly the same time, I think, like, Kieran is like, I still smell the violence. It's faint, but I smell it. <laughs> That's pretty yeah, good. That's, that's good. It. I think that's good. <laughs> After that, I don't right, know what the fuck happens. I feel like they just could keep running right south. They're like, fuck it. We'll just ride south and we'll see what happens. <laughs> that's yeah. correct. But, uh, this is a very, sh- very short chapter, right? It's like... Yeah, it's... it's yeah. Go ahead, John. But, Andrew, let's, let's get your question. I know you, you were kind of talking about, not at all. What do you think Kieran smells when he, I don't know, finds like a sex party? Uh, Why are we doing the this? scent Son of, of uh, <laughs> semen and shame, guaranteed. <laughs> semen and shame. All right. What do you think he smells when he finds? I don't know. Joe's room. Uh, semen and shame. Okay. All right. What are the uh, what are the what are the burnt marks in the grass? In the semen world? and shame. <laughs> I, I never read it as just burnt no. marks in the grass. I read it as like expansive, like everything around you is burned. Like you got hit by a fireball, but you didn't die. The burn marks on the ground are the shame, and the streaks of white in the sky are the semen. Come on, guys. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Actually, that makes more sense. Yeah. Honestly, no, it's not like it's not all burned. It's like scars on the land. They describe it as. Yeah. So uh, tell us more about your bed sheets, Joe. Uh, and semen and shame. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back. How was the bathroom, Joe? It was pretty good. <laughs> um. No matter what, the answer is semen and shame. <laughs> How's that? This world is cold and dreary. Yeah, I, I, know sh- I always feel bad here because I'm this going. is this is when uh this fucked up place breaks here, and I feel like he's just like a broken man after this. I it's not like he just doesn't know what the fuck's going on. This is literally he, like just, the the blind he's pretty footballer. Broken, dude. What even the fuck at, is like, going on? Yeah, but even at, when they get out of here, he's like. <laughs> PTSD derp. as fuck and like after like fall he's just like alright see you later I'm going back to my wife I miss the fuck out of her I'm never coming back until book 14 that's not true it goes back in book 12 I believe 
Uh, maybe it's 12. I don't know. I mean, he still fucks I think it's for 13, quite a while. Yeah, no, but you're right. Regardless. It, it is a weird, like, like, what's fascinating about Hiran, not that that's the point of the show here, but, you know, fuck it is, is that he makes an amazing character for, like, 18 fucking reasons. Like, he is the definition of old things coming new, maybe, or new things coming new. Like, he's just a very loyal character, so bring him back in. Supposedly, there's a whole bunch of versions of him if you read the last pieces of the like, you know, previous set chapters. He's loyal to Rand, but you never see him. Like, there's so yeah. much going on with him, and it's just kind of like, don't worry, he's going to take 12,000 pages off. You're like, what the fuck? That guy was awesome. Why is he not here after this book? It doesn't make sense. Too I told you, I think it's because nice. he's, he's fucked up from this, man. <clears throat> I think it was too He's much weirdly to replaced by Joel and Sandar. But he is weird, weirdly replaced by Joel and Sandar, who has Boy. no actual powers. So yeah, therefore, it, like, same character, but, like, uh, you know, it replaces, it takes the supernatural powers away, so, like, they have less to work with, so the characters actually have to do something. Yeah, it's just the side characters. <laughs> He's just too good, so he's not as interesting. So it's like, we're going to put him on the shelf for a while. He becomes three good. <laughs> um, uh, well, this is this may be a traveling stone. Other- it comes from the age before Legends, before the age of Legends, which is crazy, and I kind of I forget that every time. Boyle and sees it before they go to sleep, and he's like, "Fucking years ago." Sorry, Tom. Go ahead. He just sees it before they go to sleep, and he's like, eh, "I'm not sure about this." And then he wakes up in the morning. He's like, "Oh, oh I, knew I know it. what it is." <laughs> I fucking knew it. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Should have recognized that last night. <laughs> um, what, so the note that um, I wanted to talk about that we said a million years ago was the the colors of the portal stone, like steps going down, are the colors of the Ajas. But that's yeah. from before the Age of Legends, so it's like kind of interesting in the respect of like, did the Ajas make their colors based on something ancient that we don't know about that's sort of connected to portal stones? Like, why are these portal stones this color? Like. Dono was shaking and said no. That's oh, correct. that's a good idea. Yeah, I don't think I think the answer is no, because we find out that the Aja Aja in the old tongue sense, so from the age of legends, are kind of a f- more fleeting, not necessarily long term idea of you know, kind like of like they don't assign themselves a color, it's just like more like a yeah. like a rainbow. I wouldn't say that at all because technically they don't have to <laughs> uh, so like, the idea would be like like we'd briefly be kind of like you know the reds the blues the yellows but you'd expect the kind of the blues to turn into whomever uh, meaning like in the course of one's life they might have a portion of their peer- of their lives when they're more of a brown and then like they transition I mean, into like blue and then they transit yeah, is that what you're saying yeah yeah like if you would just or, or, or just kind of like Almost the yellow kind of is the border between, I don't know, red and orange. Oh, okay. All right. Like they were kind of like not intending to be. Like Aja was a, a kind they of. They were just green. super into color wheels? Yeah, but again, what do the colors have to do with the portal stones and why do they match so specifically? The is technically, in the Age of Legends, from what we've heard, presumably, is that color and Aja were two different things. They never, res- never were related. Aja was like, like there were like there wasn't thirteen different Aja or twelve, uh, or you know, like, seven. Yeah, or yeah, I know. Like, like there wasn't you know like, whatever the fuck number. The whole point was there were just multiple Aja growing, and the only time that they were fixed on Aja was really two, which would be right before uh, uh, Luther and Talamon attacked. Uh, Child goal. Dark one. Yeah. So why are the current Aes Sedai Ajas based on a color? You know, they've misinterp- the they've misinterpreted so. the past, like everything <laughs> else they do. I to to interject with uh, the topic of portal stones, aren't portal stones thought to be part of the cognitive? Uh, I'm using too many words, uh, or not too many words, too big words for how much Good. alcohol I've consumed. <laughs> But cognitive process for the construction of the ways weren't they like a stepping stone in the construction of the ways? I would because say- to me the portal stones feel like a kind of uh, sorry, uh, John. I don't mean to cut you off. Yeah, you're fine. Um, yeah. But to me, portal stones feel like a. I'm not calling them Terangriol. Let's mm-hmm. make that clear. 
um, even though they could be. I'm not saying they are. I'm not saying they're not. You know, I'm pulling uh, a U.S. military. I'm not denying nor confirming. <laughs> Why? Could they not be like think along the lines of a town girl designed for skimming? But this skimming goes across potential worlds, and because of the the way it traverses, that it causes lapses in time. Whereas the ways is something a closer to traveling, but it creates concrete pathways from point to point within the same time. Okay. We're yes. getting into serious metaphysics. Well, the time here. still dilates in the ways, though. Uh, no, no, oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're you can go like X amount of distance quicker than. So what I'm what I'm saying, I guess, is ultimately like using the portal stones is like a. Not exactly Teron Girl, but Teron Girl for skimming that has the potential to touch other worlds. So it can, yeah. it's, it's perception of like changes in sure, time yeah, yeah. is dependent on your understanding. Whereas the ways is like traveling, but a traveling mixed with, with like normal travel skimming, where instead of like skimming across, you walk paths. Yes. So it's, it, to me, I think it logically flows at things like, Normal people like skimming from like point A from like Faldara to Andor would happen. Yeah. And then for longer periods, you would have these portal stones to aid people that were maybe weaker in the power to skim. And if they understood them in the ages they were created, they could skim from like Faldara to Andor in like a day. And then so from there, you have one the ways. thing of note there is that they. It's definitely the super powerful ones that can use the portal stones. So yeah. like that's a weird. Is it? Yes. Yeah. yeah, Andrew. So that's that's one thing I'm not familiar being, with. You know, Rand being the one that actually gets them there. Obviously, clearly, he's one of the upper yeah, power Rand, levels. Uh, that's how you get paid the big coin. Land here does. Oh well, yeah, you know, yeah, fair enough. But still, <laughs> yeah. so Andrew, well, I mean, Landfair is like very powerful, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, but they do note that it's like loyal says like they do, they barely knew it was from the age of Le- the age before the age of legends. Even the Aes Sedai in the age of legends didn't really know what they were or how to use them properly, and only the most powerful ones could use them. So the the idea that the lesser people could use them to scam or whatever is probably not. So it's something that's However, probably closer to like, like fifth or sixth we used to have where like if you were skimming and you fell off the skimming platform, would you bump off one of the ways platforms eventually? I like that. everything else. <laughs> <I don't think laughs> so. No, I think Andrew what everything else said Andrew said though was very Yeah, great. everything else was tracking yeah, okay. great. <laughs> like as far as the kind of suddenly like, cognitive thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the idea that like these aren't just like I don't know. I'm trying to put my hands together in a weird fucking it's like, way. It's like an experimental progress, you know? Yeah. It's, you think, okay, can we, can we find a way to go from here to there? And, it, and you know, it's just like, um, like Stephen, like for us. So theoretically, or not theoretically, I mean, we live in the first age. We know that. Yeah. Um, if we were to take our time and put it into will of time, time. Time, 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 time. Sorry, I hit, I hit a reverbial loop there. Um, but it's, you know, that space and time can be distorted, and the more gravity is distorted, the more space is distorted, the more time is distorted, because time is dependent upon the gravitational pull of space. That's why somebody, two people can set their watches the exact same time on Earth. One person can go up into the ISS, come back, and their watch is at a different time than the person that was on Earth. Because time... And its tracking is dependent, uh, as, at least by our measuring mechanisms, on gravitational yeah. pull. As Cher so, said, it takes time to move on. Yeah. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> You're not wrong. And neither was she. But so if we have that and we have somebody like Stephen Hawking, you know, we have references in the Wheel of Time that talk about the Apollo program and, uh, you know, the moon landing. Uh, and other things like stasis rifles, which if you play Subnautica means something completely different. Subnautica, space, stasis rifles are not Wheel of Time stasis rifles. Anyway, um, no, there's shock lances in Wheel of Time. Sorry, what the fuck yeah, am I yeah. saying? What the fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> Fix yourself. I was lost. <laughs> but now I, I'm there. I could, I'm there. Like, when you changed the at, shock lances, I was back in. I was looking at your face and I'm like, I'm fucking up somewhere. <laughs> But so you have all this going, you have all this going on. So, I mean, in a scientific process, it would make sense that you would have something that would come around the lines of skimming. So it would probably start as like some way of like fast traveling. You know, like we're used to in like Skyrim and other video games. Jesus Christ, Jono, like you just (laughs) threw me way the fuck off. 
Who the fuck it's are you like right now? Main, There's a, his main point is to distract constantly. Have you seen the movie the Rampage? Like the indie film Rampage, Jono? No. <laughs> Go look at Rampage and then hide in fear. Not the one with... I thought you were talking Johnson. about the one with the rock. <laughs> no, 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 not no. Talking about the indie film Rampage. Because after you watch that, you'll sit there and be like, oh, Andrew thinks I am a mass murderer. I, I don't actually, but... <laughs> but he does. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. The guy makes very good environmental points, but so it would make sense that you would have something that progresses from things like uh, there. Uh, when you think about time, if time in the wheel of time is, is circular or circular, then it has to go from something like horseback riding all the way to something that uh, before it becomes horseback riding, eventually becomes something that is like almost instantaneous, like transport tubes like in Futurama. Yeah. So you have things like skimming and to me the portal stones are like the light version of skimming where depending on your knowledge depending on your control like early stages of skimming not fully relying on the power um it, your understanding would determine where you came out what of how far like ahead or behind in time whatever the case happened uh it's like time travel light but nobody intended it to be and then you get to things like traveling that bring into like first aid concept concepts like uh, Alter Hawkwing's perceptions of like, you know, how you can distort reality, how you can, if you can distort the gravitational pull of one area enough, you could alter space time to put you in another area at almost instantaneously the, the same, which would make sense. Like when you think about like how, uh, is it a lane or Avienda that undoes their traveling portal? And like, it literally, like, Avienda, yeah. Yeah. Which makes sense. Like, cause you're, you're talking at that scale, you're talking like legit quantum physics. Like we're not talking about like Ant-Man in game quantum physics. We're talking about like Hawkwing, like quantum physics. And the biggest thing that leads credence for me to these kind of thoughts is how invested and how studied Robert Jordan was in the concept of physics. Like if it comes down to a question of physics versus fantasy, I'm going to side with physics every day. I don't know how we got this kind of turnaround, but (laughs) cheers boys to tangents. You have been infected by the black tower. (laughs) Oh fuck. I've got black tower. God damn it. (laughs) I was clean before. Out of my dick. Herpes? Uh, Black Tower. Yeah, Black Tower. He actually had a <laughs> physics, right? What, Jono? Uh, like Robert Jordan actually had, a, I think, either a degree or whatever in nuclear physics. Mm-hmm. So, presumably... Also, you were saying Hawkwing, like, every time you meant Hawking. You're not it wrong. Was very yeah, I confusing. <laughs> I, am, I apologize. Like, I am. But not I know, seriously. I loved it. Like, it was it's hilarious. A, it's a slight... Time, when I finally comprehended what was going on i was like this is good i'm just gonna let this roll i feel like hawking became hawkwing after his passing so <laughs> there you go bring me into the you know this the wheel yeah so that was delightful on its own but no so yeah jordan is that, that wait wait a minute is that why he's archer hawk is it because it's science versus religion no it's no, they're just smart versus smart it was King Arthur and Arthur, anyway. King Arthur meets science. It sure, why not? I like that. <laughs> I mean, him versus the Ace and I. Yeah, that's like religion versus science. Or science versus religion, Tom. Or both versus wait. both. I feel like that's what I just. Tom. Ah, eh, whatever. Um, well, I mean, that I, I we have actual notes for the rest of this chapter of beats, but uh, who cares? That was an awesome conversation. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a short. It's the shortest chapter of all, anyway. That we expanded to the long. I mean, basically, Heron just goes like, "You're going to get us out of here, right, Rand?" And he's like, "Yes, I am a lord, and I will do that." And that's that's really the only thing. Life, uh, Rand literally pulls out. Life, uh, finds a way. We'll yeah. figure it out. <laughs> He has no he's clue what the fuck's going to happen. Right he, he, he gold blooms 100%. He has no and, idea what the fuck's uh, going on. Andrew is uh, correct. Uh, <laughs> well done, Andrew. Hey, don't blame uh, me. Blame the taint. I blame my taint so often. 
That would have been the perfect time to say that's talk us for this week. Yeah, but it's really not, just because we're not talking about that up, John. And in case we don't see you again, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and uh, blame your taint. Um, so here's a question: Does God damn it, John? <laughs> we're still having fun here. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I'm down for whatever. It's only nine oh four for me. Does Loyal realize here that Rand can channel? I think Loyal's uh, half suspected the whole time. It feels like I don't know. I think Loyal is being part of the O gear. So for for modern humanity, as we meet it, like in a Monsfield and uh, Tyron Ferry, like. Unless you're part of Whitebridge, unless you're part, uh, and even Whitebridge considers them like Whitebridge doesn't think that they're still around because the old gear have gone. They've all drawn back to their settings. They're like, you're all putting long hilts on your axes, whatever the fuck that means. Because to me, that means you have more leverage and it has more impact. But okay, old gear, do what you do. Um, that. I just wonder if it blinked. I looked at my microphone stand and blinked like full on All right, like, to Harry your Potter question, Oblivion Jono. just blinked. <laughs> Oblivion. <laughs> Jono, uh, I don't know if he does. I don't, I think he may be suspecting Who right now. Maybe. Okay. It's oh, okay. Like, so does, does loyal suspect the ranking channels? Yeah. I don't think he's suspecting yet until this moment. Cause he literally looks at Rand and goes like, how do you expect us to get us out of here? What the fuck is going Unless you can on? channel it. The only person that could get us out of here is a channeler. And I think like, and Rand's like, I don't know. His you know, resp- kind of thing. And I, think I like his response I though. Like, Wait a his minute. His response is not, uh, yeah, it, it, his it, response it, is like, turn to the side, look at a tree and, yeah. <laughs> I have a bow staff. And it's like, <laughs> wow, that's a super dope ability. Like, if you were in any kind staff. of MMORPG <laughs> and you could just sing a bow staff into existence, like, I don't know what's going on. Me neither. I used to be your tank, but now he bowled <laughs> And Ransom, and they're like right. limited number of arrows, and here is like, <laughs> smells like danger. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you're we here, like you're here. important. You can smell like a future trail. Yeah, this may or may not have been from a different era. So, well, we also have this random, super, super sexy ladies. I like them big. I like them <laughs> chunky. <laughs> like, I mean, that's not how she goes, but that's like. <laughs> I feel like we should have started this episode now because I, I like. The, I like to imagine Landfear just be like, <laughs> I like them big. Tell us. I like them chunky. And I'm like, hey, girl, you know what? I'm here. Like, Serene? Sounds like the only serenity I need. Rand is just a stronger, uh, physically more masculine uh, farmer than I am. And you know he's what? A, he's That's a strapping what lad. He's a strapping young lad. He can definitely pull Bella's flanks. Uh, though he gets distracted by random figures in black cloaks. So who doesn't? The the old gear seem to be the most I like as I can hear from Tom, crickets chirping in the background, all that's going on, like everything the country music loves right now is going on in Tom's background, which I love. No, 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 don't mute it. I love it. <laughs> like this is like every concert I ever been to as a child. Like let's listen to country music. Cricket, 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 cricket. Go sleep well. Good night, Kentucky. Um, <laughs> but I mean, it's kind of the same thing. Like <laughs> the old gear resonates so well with like campers, and like for me, that's the mentality I always had. Like think campers, think rangers, think like diehard Boy Scouts, like people yeah. into with nature, and they don't really care about what happens to the world. They care about what happens to nature i i kind of like that mentality it's like so it's not like loyal has suspected now or before it's almost like it doesn't really matter to him you know like it's not what he's focused on i mean yeah because they talk about how like they have distanced themselves from humanity in the world before and that's yeah. why, well, if you're, why if you're you loyal, have the settings <clears throat> What's scarier that like to find out that one of your best friends can channel or that you're in another goddamn dimension? Uh, another goddamn dimension is guaranteed <laughs> like, your, scarier. <laughs> yeah, that's your first. Priority. I just imagine Loyal being like, it got a whole lot quieter in this bitch. What the fuck? 
<laughs> oh, he's just taking notes. He's like, this, this is interesting. I, I, I did his voice uh, this justice. If I could pull up the voice mod faster, I would to do it. <laughs> but I'll do it as best as I can by myself. Oh, no. The crickets have stopped <laughs> chirping. Quit <laughs> putting a long handle on your axe, Rand. Nature is suffering. <laughs> Shit. So that's Twatcast for this week. If you have any too much questions, fun. the best way to find us is on Twitter at Twatcast. Listen wherever you get your podcast. You can email us twatcast at gmail.com. We also have a Discord. It's permanently linked at the top of our Twitter. We barely use it, but we're sort of doing stuff with it. <laughs> I need to join it because I am not currently a member, but I will be rectifying that before the end of tonight. Hey, you play your cards right, I'll rectify you. <laughs> We're on Patreon at patreon.com slash podcast. If you enjoy the show, help us out and give us a buck. Twatcast theme song brought to you by Taffy Bennington at Sing with Taffy on Twitter and Anarchy 101 on YouTube. Andrew plugs. Oh god. Guys, the the first plug honestly has to go to Twatcast. Like these guys are you guys are utterly amazing. Like if literally every person that said like, hey Andrew or, well, Black Tower Podcast, but whoever <laughs> happens to answer, come and hang out. Okay, cool. What's the show prep? Don't read anything. Just drink alcohol. <laughs> you fucking win. <laughs> you already know what the Black Tower Podcast is all about. Myself, Josh, Daniel are all about it. Just depends on who gets to us, for, uh, who gets to us first. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's not right. We have our own internal fights. Like, no, I'll take it. No, I'll take it. It's real, like, yeah, whoever wins out the fight. And I won this time. My colon has it. <laughs> that being said, listen on listen to Andrew and Josh and Daniel on Black Tower Podcast and wherever you get your podcast, I assume it's available. We do have a new website. Oh, oh really? We, yeah, we do. We find. Are you going to hit us with a www? I would, first? but I keep burping because you guys are like, drink alcohol for this episode. It'll be fun and we're not going to take The website about. is called www. Period. Wait, www. Period. Yeah, period. exactly. Period. Like it's only for people that are still in middle school slash high school female <laughs> economic classes. I don't know what economics has to do with periods. What's anyway, your new website, Andrew? A lot. It is www.blacktowerpod.com. From there, you can find uh, our episodes uh, from our own podcast. You can find our YouTube channel. You can find everything about with us, uh, as well as the merch store, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, but do it? not let it distract from the lovely, lovely folks here at Twatcast. Definitely don't let it do that. You keep plugging us during your plug time. It's very adorable. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, <laughs> it's hey. a respect thing. It's like, hey, yeah, you gave me time to plug, but the big thing is like, I, I'm here on your stuff. So plug your stuff. Your stuff is most important. Andrew, uh, we are more than proud to plug you. Hey, well, make sure that <laughs> you guys are on the great blight.com. Yeah. Go get a. Go get no, we're guys, not yet. Uh, that son of a bitch. Number. Well, you need to send some messages. <laughs> Next week, after we send some messages and plug <laughs> each other online, after we finish plugging each other, we're going to cover Book Two, The Great Hunt, Part Six, covering chapters 14 through 17. I'm John. Oh, you listen to Joe. Keep the change you feel, the animals. Tom. Stay math. <clears throat> and apparently, Andrew from the Black Tower Podcast. DTP. Hashtag embrace the taint, y'all. DTP. <laughs> Everyone shut the f*** up.